for more information, please visit our website at darkcybernetics.com. This is Dark Cybernetics Computer Tips Complete Series, Episode 1 Building a Customized PC. Follow along with our free course documentation. In this episode, we will talk about pricing and comparing components, ordering the right fit gear, meaning your computer components, and we will identify each computer part. For those of you considering building your first PC or personal computer, the task may seem daunting. With help, hard work, and determination, anyone can build their first computer. There are certain parts that a person would need to purchase to build their first computer. Not all of these parts are required when building your first computer. You can build your first computer inside of any type of device. You may not need to purchase a case or you can get a used case from a second-hand store or from a friend to build your first computer. Your first computer could be inside of a old 20-year-old gaming console or it could be inside of an old refrigerator, a dresser. You can put your first computer inside of a homemade arcade cabinet. Whatever the case or whichever design or system you would like to create. Your first computer could be a dinosaur or a car or a ship, a boat, uh, a cheese sandwich. Anything you think would be a great first project would be a good idea, a good start. But for building our first computer, we need to think about the prices for each component and what things we would need to purchase to make our computer a nice computer, a stable computer, a long-lasting device. If your aim is to build your first computer as a trial project, then going to a second-hand store to purchase a low-cost, perhaps even $2 keyboard and a $2 mouse and a perhaps a $5 monitor would be a good first step. Keep in mind that there are always discounts online and at retail stores and in other locations. For this project, we will need a clean area. When I mean clean area, we need an area where there is no liquids, there is enough space to fit the ATX case, or where we can find screws if they fall. We need an area where if something drops, or if we have to apply force, nothing moves. Some components needed for building our first computer. We need to think about buying perhaps non-magnetic screwdrivers. These non-magnetic screwdrivers can be purchased offline or from a retail store, a hardware store, used. We can then think about what type of case we might want for our project or we could head to the hardware store or anywhere else to purchase the components we would need for this first project. A good step when building a computer is to have a, a decent plan for your project. Every project should start with a, a decent plan, a well-formulated idea, and a steady follow-through. Our first task would be to identify each project. 
if our aim is to install the motherboard first, we need to think about what type of processor we would want first. So if I wanted a processor from one of the more major contributors, we would need to match that CPU or central processing unit to a motherboard which matches the correct socket. Also, each purchased part, if purchased from a major distributor, would then we could extend the lifetime of our object by purchasing a warranty, which is also an optional step if, if this is your first computer and you have excess capital. Maybe just purchasing the parts right out would be a nice first step. But for those of you on a budget and are concerned about the type of project we would need to complete, we might want to hold off on making steady purchases or more severe purchases before we were absolutely sure that the purchased parts or the components that we would like to assemble for our computer and our price breakdown matches our budget. If this is an office computer, an office computer would need a monitor, some type of display device. It would have to be able to fit inside of a desk or near in a cubicle or inside of a cabinet which is in turn a bad place to put a computer if you think about dust you may want to purchase dust filters and other devices to aid in the creation of our computer the longevity so some components you would need for your first computer are beyond the magnetic screwdrivers would be an optical disk drive this optical disk drive would be like a blu-ray player or a DVD-ROM drive or a type of device used for playing discs. You can go beyond this. You may not need a optical drive if you want to install your operating system or OS from a bootable drive, but keep in mind that you would want some type of licensed or stable operating system. There's Unix, there's Linux, there's Microsoft related projects. We can use Ubuntu. We can use other operating systems that are stable and of course for licensed operating systems you would need a product key to install the operating system completely. There are other steps which in turn would require the internet to install an operating system, a modern operating system. And so wireless connectivity would be a crucial component so or wire con connectivity would be a, a useful component so sometimes a network card or a wireless card would be required also, to display graphics, we might need, on the newer computers, a graphics card or a GPU for displaying visual graphics and other notation text to the screen. To type, we would need some type of input device. We would need a, a keyboard and to move the cursor on the mouse. To move the cursor on the screen we would need a, a mouse like or a, a trackball would be an optimal tool to use to use during our installation process. If you want to store information on your computer you would need a hard drive and the hard drive 
stores our files, our operating systems. You may need to even partition the drive, an area for your files, an area for your operating system. This all can be accomplished during the, during the installation process for your operating system in some operating systems. To execute programs, we need to have RAM. This is random access memory, and it can be expensive at times. But to start a computer, you may only need one stick. So if you wanted the 8 gigabyte stick of RAM, if you wanted to max out your computer for this particular portion of this project for 32 gigabytes of RAM for this computer, you may want to purchase them one at a time because they might be expensive. And once they upgrade to this to max at 64 gigabytes of RAM in your computer, you may want to buy a, 60, a single 16 gigabyte stick of RAM. Display devices can be purchased at low cost. Some is cheap as around a hundred dollars for a 32 inch you could skip a monitor you could purchase an HD TV and use that as a monitor if your graphics card has support for HDMI that's a nice op option or if you have extra capital you could use a projector but keep in mind that these things require software and software for your computer and times is called a driver you may need drivers for your computer dust filters can be used and purchased in conjunction with system fans and they have their own plugins at times Other needed items would be the power supply. A power supply is needed for different types of computers. Your computer has on the motherboard slots for a 24 pin plug-in and other plugins like an 8 pin plug-in up near the processor near the top near the back plate. A back plate would come with your purchase of your motherboard and you would have to seat the back plate inside of your case before you inserted your motherboard. Before you insert your motherboard into your case you would have to put in the screw mounts and the, the washers so it's your motherboard would be nested between some layer so that your, your motherboard is mounted to the backboard and we have to keep in mind there's cable management this idea of keeping airflow inside of the computer if you use a traditional cooler you can always upgrade to a water cooler which in turn may be expensive and water coolers may need to be replaced over so many years of use but it would make your computer quieter and that is often a good option if you are worried about noise or if you like to work in a quiet area your graphics card has sometimes 4 pin sometimes 6 pin other times 2 8 pin connectors if you have a power supply which is needed for your computer you would need to purchase a power supply that supports your graphics card without a graphics card that is decent we may have lackluster performance on videos on if it was a gaming computer you may have a poor gaming experience which would be a bad first experience for your own computer from online searches and scouting retail stores we can break down prices for each component into two categories 
low profile and high quality. For headphones, we have seen from online scouting that they can be purchased between $1 to $10 and for high end, higher quality sound and audio for $300. For low quality for motherboards or, or standard edition, not to say that all motherboards are low and they're high, but there are many cases and there are full size motherboards and they can be purchased for somewhere between $50 to $99 for the standard or low. And there are higher quality boards for, mind you, that match the processor, somewhere around 400 to maybe 500, nearly around $500 after taxes. Graphics cards can be purchased, the low profile ones can be purchased somewhere around $25 to $70. These could be low profile. They could even be considered used cards for last year's model, maybe purchased for $70 or a year before last model. It's not the latest technology, but it would get the job done for building our first computer. And our workstation cards or high quality cards or can be purchased somewhere around $1,500. For full size cases, we can purchase them online somewhere between. 15 to 25 dollars, 15 to 45 dollars, and higher quality cases, one made out of more perhaps sturdy material, we hope, can be purchased somewhere around 200 dollars. For RAM, it depends on the motherboard, of course, can be purchased somewhere around 30 dollars to 50 dollars for some of the lower quality RAM. For some of our higher quality RAM, perhaps purchasing all the RAM may be or somewhere around $450. A mouse can be purchased online or even from a second-hand store for a dollar to five dollars. Retail stores perhaps ten. And that seems affordable for the amount of clicking and work that we do with a mouse. And some of the higher quality, perhaps gaming mouses can mice can be purchased for a hundred dollars. A monitor display device can be purchased somewhere around $30 to $70. may not be the largest monitor, but it is a monitor displaying information and some of our larger devices could be upwards of $1,000. Power supplies, keep in mind that the voltage is important. If you purchase a, a power supply, suppose it was 600 or 800 watts it could be around $50 before shipping. And if we purchased one of the 1,000 watt power supplies, it may be around $270 if it had a warranty and what have you. Keyboards can be purchased somewhere around $6 to $10 on the low end. And a keyboard for a gaming particular computer or maybe around $200. Optical disk drives, DVD players can be purchased as low as $20, um, high end maybe $150 US dollars. A CPU with a fan, keep in mind if it was a, an older socket, it may be purchased between $50 to $100. And the newer, maybe somewhere around $800, $750. And some mid range. New ones, their introductory price may be around it may be a medium, medium between seven and one hundred. Uh, our grand total for building a computer is somewhere around five hundred dollars, and for a low quality computer or low computer, maybe our base minimum would be around two hundred. $25 for shipping, handling, and taxes. Our high quality computer, of course, would be into the thousands. But we're not to say that we can't build a computer to be in of low, low and high quality parts. So we could have a find a nice, we could find get a nice, decent working computer for somewhere around $400 and still get the same functionality as a higher range PC.
at this point we will talk about each particular component you will not need all of these components to build your first computer some PC components are less strenuous than others to use and to manipulate in your first computer you will of course need a motherboard on the motherboard there is a socket a CPU socket there is a 24 pin connector there are system pins at the bottom for the start reset and power on there's an 8 pin connector at the top of the board there are fan plug-ins there are different slots there's the PCIe slot there's a PCI slot there's even many PCI slots for installing graphics cards. Graphics cards take up two slots and you can SLI two cards together if your power supply has the right voltage. If your house has the right voltage, you may need a voltmeter to check your wattage. Sometimes plug in a, a new computer and having two cards may short out some devices or even fry the motherboard, which is a warranty thing to keep in mind and consider. Next we'll talk about the processor. Some processors come with their own thermal paste. We have our processor. There's, there's a heat sink usually. There's a power plug-in usually for the fan. And there's some type of mount device. Sometimes putting in the processor may be a problem. Um, the processor goes in one way. Processors pins are sometimes made out of gold so if they bend you can use a safety pin at your own risk to straighten the pins to put the card back in but keep in mind that sometimes if you break a pin it may be non-functional it may not work anymore and that's something you will find when you try to post your computer your power on self test it may not work the next object we'll talk about is the power supply. The power supply has an on off switch. We use the power supply. Um, there's a main power on off switch. There's a voltage. That, that other switch is just based on the country we, we're, that we're in. It, in its traditional setting, it's probably fine. So, I have no reason to switch the voltage. There's sometimes a six pin connector, there's an eight pin connector, maybe a four pin connector, there's a 24 pin connector, there's other SATA power plugins. There is, of course, a lot of cable management to do. Uh, this is, for this example, is an 800 watt power supply. There may be extra plugins. You may need to purchase extra additional uh, plug in converters for your power supply. If you purchase a power supply and, and there is not enough plug-ins for your extra fans, you may need to, or those in addition to the starting prices. And so, there's, of course, your price may go up if you bought the larger case or you bought the, the more expensive power supply or more expensive processor. The next item we'll talk about is the hard drive for storing our operating system. There's usually a power plug-in and there's a SATA plug-in for our plug-in for our computer. Of course, these are dependent. You may have an older computer and an IDE, and, or if you have a a standard solid-state drive or SSD drive. You, it has a similar setup and keep in mind your case has screws some cases have a tray which your hard drive sits on and you slide it in slide it out and you screw the motherboard plug-ins and, and hard drive into a certain slot on your computer the next item we will talk about is the case itself the front side of the case we can see that there is a power supply there's a reset button there's a hard drive light there are drive slots which are removable on some cases this is a tower case there may be a 
that's a fan on the outside. There's a back plate with holes in it on the back. And they may have a table mount, rubber stopper, so the case will not slide. On the back side of the case, a better picture, we can think about our back plate being placed in. There may be audio plugins, and there is an Ethernet plugin, and there may be several USB plugins. Even for the top, there may be a, an old plugin for a traditional mouse. You may have a USB mouse now. Um, the graphics card may take up two slots in the back. Those screw holes can be re replaced. They may have screens. You may need to install a, a dust filter, maybe not in the back, but in the front when the intake fans, for the intake fans. Our power supply has a switch for on and off. And we have a, our wireless card, which is PCI for this particular PC which can be removed and re-socketed into any slot where it would fit. You know, there we can also have a sound card if you wanted better audio. Next we'll talk about the keyboard. We know the standard keyboard and there are keys. This is a USB keyboard. There are different plugins for the keyboard. There's function keys across the top. Your computer keyboard may have special lights and other features which are really based on which one you purchased. Our mouse or trackball has three buttons and we can see that there's a similarity between the trackball mouse and the regular USB mouse. Next we'll talk about the graphics card. Graphics cards, this is a PCIe card and this one has HDMI plugins. You may need the traditional D plugins or you may have an 8 pin connector this one needs two 8 pin connectors which keep in mind cable management is important um, you may need a headphone so you can see that this one has a microphone headset so we can listen to audio and check and see if our sound works you would need a bootable operating system and a working product key you would need an optical disk drive. There's a, little, a light for that. And there's plug, screw holes and plugins for the disk tray. And you can tell which type we have by looking at the front. There's a re eject button. Our display devices we have a monitor. There's an on and off button. This one's got the HDMI. And we can look over our computer before we, we would need things like RAM, of course. We, they would come in, in twin pairs. We could purchase, and keep in mind when you purchase RAM, buy the same RAM for your, if you purchase a certain brand, buy that brand, all of those sticks the same because you could perhaps get a discount or if something breaks, you it would be hard to replace that product because as we know, mar the market changes, and if you buy two sticks, if one dies, you're okay. You just replace it, and we are okay and we're ready to go. Other objects we need to think about is our wireless card. Our wireless card is different, and some may have additional anten antennae. And uh, there's a back plate that fits in. Some of them, like the graphics card, we need our non magnetic screwdrivers to be installed. So we need some kind of anti static wristband or what have you before we install our computer. We would need to keep in mind that we would need to ground ourselves before we started this project. And we would need to keep our computer in an elevated area, clean area before we begin and keep in mind that screws there are different size screws you may need even need a toolkit before you begin this project so whichever project you want to create or if you need to explore first or a price check keep in mind that it's your first computer and you need to be confident before you start the project and for more information, please visit our website at darkcybernetics.com.